Wembley Stadium, 90,000 fans. There'll be millions around the world watching these two men in a fight for the ages. Welcome to The Gloves Are Off. I watched Vladimir for years, man, coming up in the game. I didn't expect to be in this position, but I'm going to embrace it. I need this type of competition to show the world what I'm about. The potential is real. There's so many questions. Is it too late for me, too early for him? All those questions are going to be answered. I'm obsessed with my goal to raise my hands after the fight. Experience, something you can't buy, borrow, or pretend to have. Something that he's got a lot of. Is that an issue in this fight? No. You rise to the occasion. Experience comes with age, and I've been hearing a lot about age, you know. So, it's a young man's sport boxing. At the same time, he's got his experience. But it's good, and it'll be good to see you through a few rounds and so on and so forth. But then I think for me personally, the youth, the excitement, the adrenaline, speed is something that you can't replace. We'll start causing some issues, some problems. Um, I just think that you can't prepare for what I may bring to the table April 29th. No matter how much experience, as you asked, one may have. Experience. You mentioned youth, you mentioned speed. Have you still got that? Buddy, you're talking like we're having a funeral party here. <laughs> it is a very serious topic <laughs> and all the serious faces. It is something that is actually with experience you can enjoy and taking it easy. Not saying like, I, I'm so like relaxed, I'm not, but I'm taking it easy. And it comes with experience. Speed kills, rule in boxing. You heard about it, you too. But do you know what kills speed? Anticipation. You cannot buy anticipation. Anticipation comes with time, fights, age, He's good. He's learning. <laughs> That's what I actually like about this guy. And you've got to be careful what you're saying because he's observing it. He's talent for it. But anticipation and you know as an experienced fighter, and I agree with you. Young lion as you were compared with the old guns or whatever, like I don't know what people called me. But, um, and we will, we will see on 29th the truth what works, what doesn't. Why this fight? Why now? Timing led to it. I think that, so when I first turned professional, I was building, learning, and even in my first fight, people were saying, when are you going to fight the likes of Fury? When are you going to fight the likes of Klitschko? And I was like, give me some time. Give me some time. And uh, I think that timing is everything. As you said, anticipation, timing, timing is everything. And, the fight has been anticipated and we're here now. It's an opportunity I couldn't turn up. I needed someone who can potentially challenge me. We, and that's why I say potentially, because you never know until you fight. The job is to make the fight look easy. That's the job is to make a fight look easy. So is this the challenge? We'll find out April 29th. And that's why the fight came about and I took the fight with both hands. If you were advising Anthony Joshua, would you advise him to take this fight now? history and momentum advising us to take this challenge, both of us. Otherwise, it's going to be too late. Because to watch the difference between um, two Olympic champions were becoming their goal is 16 years. So it's amazing to watch for the fans. This is once in a lifetime to watch two Olympic champions fight each other current champion, former champion, competing in the same ring, timing is perfect. I will not advise anything. The timing advised us and the momentum 
which is guaranteed to me. K2 Promotions is your promotion. You have your own fighters. If he was one of your fighters, would you put him in a fight with you now? This is the only card and chance and joker that I have at the heavyweight division today. Who else? Who else am I going to fight now? You can name a couple of names, but the true challenge, the true excitement that can be put in this uh, event and fight and matchmaking for the fans point of view, Joshua Klitschko, hands down. Would your advisor have picked uh, Vladimir Klitschko if he didn't lose to, to Tyson Fury? Now? It's interesting that you mentioned if he didn't lose to Tyson Fury, because I think that opened up the division. I think I would have given my fighter at this stage a few more learning fights, because you need as many learning fights as possible. But I'd ask that, that's as a manager. A manager's there to protect a fighter. The, the fighter on my right shoulder is screaming at this opportunity, 100%. Let's fight, why not? It's the same man, same clone. I'm fighting myself, basically. Let's go. So, yeah, I would, then I listen to the fighter and see what does he really want? What does his spirit tell him? I just want to add that uh, if the loss against Fury wouldn't be there, we wouldn't be sitting here, we wouldn't be three sitting of us. There. He wouldn't be champion. How did that affect you as a 40-year-old man now? You'll be 41 by the time you Screw you. <laughs> You're older than me. <laughs> <laughs> How did that affect you? Mentally, how does it affect your, your attitude? To if you now? didn't ask me that question, it didn't affect me at all. So now I have to think about it. And by the time I'll be uh, in the ring uh, on 29th of April, I'll be 41. Do I feel it? Honestly, I don't. Is it bad that I had a long break? First time in a quarter of a century, over a year? Is it bad? Today I would say it's good. But the truth is going to come up on the 29th of April and I can maybe change my mind, maybe not. So until now, it's, um, it's all falling into our hands. The opportunities are coming to us or came to us. We took it and timing could just work its own way. And I, I, I just can be thankful and happy that um, certain things happened. Maybe they were negative for me, like losing the titles. On the other hand, it's positive because it's turned around and um, one door closed, that opens. That's how in life is. There are some pro and cons, and every person has certain qualities, negative and positive, weaknesses and strength. Find the weakness and use it. Do you think he thinks you've got a weakness? Do you think you'll find a weakness if there is one? Or is it your time? It's my time. Yeah, it's my time. No. I don't think you'll find a weakness. What do you see in him? How, how do you think his attitude yeah. will have changed since his loss? Obsessed. Obsessed. Losing. Um, I've been to, I went to an event once and, and one thing that always stuck with me is that the guy who won the award said he dedicates his award to all the losers because that's what gave him inspiration. Um, I felt that when I fought Dylan, even though I won, I took that as a loss because I was disappointed in my performance. And I said, from that day, I'll go out and I'll dominate. I'll ne I won't even take a punch. I'll do my best not to take a punch. So losing could be a turning point where you turn that switch again and that fire gets turned up a little bit more. And that's what I want. I'm not, I'm not shying away from that. And I listen and I hear and I'm like, it's good because it's a challenge that I need. 90,000 people. I'm not really interested if it was 10 people, 90,000, but there is 90,000. I need this type of competition to show the world what I'm about. The potential is real. Anthony mentions 90,000 people at Wembley Stadium. It's, been, it's the first time in over 10 years you're going in the ring as a challenger. You're going to the UK. It's a hotbed. The fans are passionate. How are you going to deal with the pressure of all the fans backing the homeboy? I just always rely on my experience, practical experience. I've been uh, fighting in Cologne, home base of Axel Schulz, for European title 1999. 19,000 people in, in a sold-out arena were against me. They booed me 
walking to the ring and until the fifth round they were booing me and they cheered me up when I was leaving the ring. There's only one language. It doesn't matter nationality, what you look like, but in sport there's only one language, your performance. And I understand it's a comfort zone, well it could be both. Uh, Anthony been performing in London he won the Olympics in London, he won his first uh, professional title, world title in London. He's going to fight in front of 90,000 in London. So it's his home and it's might be an advantage like, you know, uh, when soccer teams are playing home, they're just playing better. On the other hand, it's, it's a great pressure. And honestly, I don't want to be in AJ's skin right now. I can't talk about my future. I can only talk about what I've done in the past as a professional. I'm going for a knockout. If you win, I will congratulate you. When you lose, I will help you to come back. Let's do it! You guys have sparred together in the past. You, you employed him as your sparring partner. What I'm struggling with is, <clears throat> or it's in the back of my head, I'm thinking master-student attitude. Are you, are you struggling to shake that attitude or am I wrong? And you're just trying to be cool? I'm always cool. As I said, I've got to be natural. I can't come in here and fake and, and act a way that's not in my nature. For instance, sparring, I didn't go in there. I didn't have anything to prove to anyone. That wasn't my reason. My, I was a student preparing Klitschko for his fight against Pula. That was it. There was no other element to why I was in that ring. And to learn how a champion sets up camp. And that's what I was analysing at the time. But competing, it's different. It's clear. There's no two ways about it. And as I always said, even brothers fight, cousins fight. And sometimes it can get heated. And then whatever happens after, after. So we will fight and compete and push and shove and try and hit harder. Be alert. That's just how it's going to get down April 29th. There's no two ways about it. There's no secret to it. You're saying you're being for real. Do you think he's... You're trying to drop a couple of mind games on you? No, Regardless of how he no, talks, no, how no, he no, refers no. to you, no. how he talks about... I thought about it, but no. Straight up as well, just straight up, down the line. Respect, respect, fight, fight, move on. Vladimir, do me a favour. You look at Anthony and tell me how you'd beat Anthony, 29th of April. Well, then he's going to know. <laughs> It's going to prepare for it. Um, I believe he has a very good analytic mind. And I've been observing him in the camp. There's a, a difference between you and me. And we'll see how it's going to go. We look alike, size-wise. Arm length, pretty much the same. Biceps, maybe in this uh, smaller t-shirt, you look better. <laughs> <laughs> Punching power. We don't need to talk about it, so yeah. on both sides. So there is a lot of equal things. Yeah. Preparation, um, camp, altitude training, mm -hmm. uh, nutrition. Yeah. Um, so you can name a lot of things. So we're like, the more I look at it, there's like, it's a copy in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Different, but in a certain way, it's a copy. I'm obsessed with my goal to raise my hands after the fight and leave the ring as the winner. After having this experience in my so far last fight, I'm not happy with that, but this obsession, in other words, love is like a threat going through my heart and my mind. And I totally love it. And I believe he said it also, that obsession is something that he's having as well and he's going to do the opposite. It's like a match game in chess. Every person trying to put himself on the other side to see his figures, how they stand like, to have a different view, and use the weakness. You're not an exception. You're having weak sides, even if you're as strong as a bull. So do I. And better fighter, better pugilist, better Mind set up is gonna conquer. Let's do it. Let's rock and roll. Is this a knockout or points in your head? 
um, well, um, I've been fighting guys where uh, they had great record of knockouts. Um, I probably will pull out Samuel Peter fight. Mm. He was screaming after the fight, who is next? And he was totally hepped up as, uh, as the next champion. And um, I was dead man walking. Literally, that's what I was called. There is no chance that this fight possibly can go through the distance, even if he got hurt in the final round and he's still standing somehow. I was on the floor multiple times during this fight. And nobody would have thought that this is going to go through the distance. So you never know. Just be ready for whatever going to come up. Good if it goes earlier and good if it goes over the distance because you're ready for it. Then on the day, the end result is important. Anthony, mm. do you knock this old wise man out, ex-champion, lion? I hate this word, ex-champion, but... Officially. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you knock him out? Does he go the distance? So many boxes to be ticked. I'm going for the knockout. It's what I do. I haven't experienced losing as a professional yet, so I don't know that feeling. And all I can talk about is what I do in the ring at this present time. I can't talk about my future. I can only talk about what I've done in the past as a professional. I'm going for a knockout. But as I always say, you either crumble or rise to the occasion. Um, he's harder to hit than all my other opponents. Completely different style, and I'm very aware of that. Um, but at the end of the day, you have, you have stance, orthodox southpaw, front foot fighter, back foot fighter, and you have two hands. You have hookers and you have straight shot punches. Um, so I know potentially, looking, what I'll deal with. You've got a jabber, you've got more than one way to skin a cat. Jab, double, slip, slip. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible because when it's something you love and something you're passionate about, you do it with ease. And I always say my job is to make any one of my opponents look like a novice. That's my job when I'm in the ring. Well, I mean, I knew I boxed club study eight years old, so I knew it was about controlling the pace of the opponent. Mm. So up against a young guy that has the pace, that has the power, how do you control that? How do you, how do you mesmerise, hypnotise someone like Anthony? I'll show it to you in the ring. I was going to get my pen and pad for this one. <laughs> but I respect that. And I'm just saying that it's easy for me to say it sitting here as well. You know, when, when I'm watching fights and I'm, throw your jab, throw your right hand as, as, an, as, a, as a fan of boxing. It's easy for me to sit here and say, it, but it's completely different in the ring. But you've asked and I'm going to give it to you verbally. But you have to show it in the ring. But how I'm doing now is conditioning my mind, talking about it visualising it to make it into reality. Does this worry you? Because he, he actually, you're right, he talks like you, he's analytical, he, he, he measures it, he's very cool. In, uh, in regards to your other opponents that you've had, they've shouted at you, they've threatened you, they've tried to tell you they're, they're better than you. But this guy is kind of playing you. Does this bother you at all? It's great. I listen. I, I will not hide it, and um, I've been always complimentary of him, supportive of his talent. Even if K2 didn't sign Anthony, mm -hmm. Matchroom got it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but it's it's it's. Uh, I think it's just um, it's a great opportunity for any promoter work with an athlete that is so determined to the sport. He's not a drinker, he's not a party lion, I mean, maybe, but <laughs> at least, you yeah. know, he's uh, having this um, heart on fire for the sport and mind. I think it's just 
something that is great. So all around, it's a great story, and uh, I'm not going to eat his children, future children, yeah. um, or anything like that. Yeah. So I will just yeah. um, will continue to be complimentary, and I did say it yeah. uh, the way I meant it. Just one second. Yeah. Um, if you win, I will congratulate you. When you lose, I will help you to come back. And he said that before. And whether you use this, what I'm going to say, in, in, in a gloves are off situation, because as I said, we need to flip a table. I need to break someone's head. Listen, I'm dealing with a top five heavyweight of all time. And tune in, because this is what people want to see. The real deal. He's proved it. He's lived it. He's walked it. Owns a T-shirt. I watched Vladimir for years, man, coming up in the game. If I win, when I win, he'll congratulate me. And that's why I'll leave it. What would you do if you didn't win? Is that the end of Anthony Joshua? No. No. I can't think that far, man. I can't. I can't think that far. What would I do if I didn't win? Don't think about it. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't I'm going to ask you the same it. question. Is that the end of Vladimir Klitschko at 41 years old? I don't think about it. Did you need this? Because you have nothing else to achieve. Yeah, I've, I've been asked this question. I do. I do. I have this competitive gene in me. And not that I'm blind. I'm totally aware of all the jeopardies and danger and all of this. I've been there. And I breed boxing. I know boxing from A to Z. Not to Z, but I'm still learning. You never stop learning. But it's an absolutely extravagant and unique opportunity to take it. I'm so happy that he raised up. He became champion. He got this, in a short period of time, awareness and hype in Great Britain. So we can make this fight and this arena unique place for the fans of boxing. And it's packed. You want to get a ticket, you won't get it. It's sold out <laughs> three times. So it's so great. Great for sport, great for us. I wish you good luck, great preparation. Let's get ready and give it all in the ring. I'm just happy about it. So you should too. Andre, boys. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. It's the gloves are off. <laughs>